Hello, my name's Dr. Wees and I'm a South African overclocker. So we're going to be doing something a little bit different for this video. And uh, during Computex, it was a new um, yeah, memory product that was launched and that we all used. And that was from uh, this Zadak 511 stable. And the DIMMs that we used were the 3200C16 um, DIMM. So it's just a stick of that. Now let's just get that into view. Uh, right, so it's a Zadak 511 shield. Uh, it's a 3200C15 uh, BDAR set of memory. The uh, company was kind enough to send out uh, a couple of these DIMMs to all the participants at, uh, from the world tour. But what happened to mine was the customs and border control really just uh, had a field day. They, they queried the invoice. They went for inspection. During inspection, I think they used uh, you know, a sledgehammer to open the packaging or something to that effect. And basically, every single DIMM that I received um, came through with damaged components on the board. So what I want to do now is just go through and try and identify um, the values for the damaged components. And then the plan is to try and Frankenstein uh, the memory modules together from other memory modules of the, you know, to try and replace the components, basically. It's going to be a bit of interesting. So that's why I'm not doing it live. I really want to try and um, concentrate and get the recording done. So what I'm doing is, I'm going to be comparing it to a setup that I've currently got going. So if you have a look what I've got on the test bench at the moment, I've got the uh, Corsair Elite AX1500R that's supplying all the power. The cooling today is going to be provided by the Cooler Master Nepton 280L. So that's an all-in-one water cooler uh, with the 140 millimeter uh, fans on it. And then the motherboard I'm using for the testing today is the MSI Z170R Gaming Pro AC. And the reason for that is really because of the MSI OC Godlike competition that, that's on the go at the moment. Uh, so all the testing is just going to be basically done on that. And I've got the profile set up already. I'm just trying to sort out some issues with the ME corruptions and all that sort of stuff. So that's basically what we've got going on here at the moment. Um, let's just give you a background as to uh, what the damages look like. So I've gone ahead and I've set up some photographs. And if you have a look here, you can clearly see the... the um, I've highlighted the damaged components. And really all that's happened there is that the guys, obviously they were doing the inspections or whatever they were doing, were just a little bit rough with the components and really has um, put me in a, in a hard spot because, you know, I want to give the memory a good test. So if we have a look here, there's another image here. There you can see that's clearly damaged. And then uh, I've got some, some other images here. We transition that across. And uh, you can see there's just there's just components missing, components that have been damaged, and it's it's a real mess. So the plan is to use a hot air gun and to remove the damaged components, then measure on another DIM that has still got those that the components in place to see what the value is of the components, and then hopefully from there I'll be able to to find the components of other memory sticks that are are no longer any good to me. I've got a whole stack of memory all over the place in this room, so ranging from DDR1 all the way up to far too much DDR4 lying around at the moment. Um, so I'm gonna Frankenstein that all up and get it to work. Um, I'm gonna change the camera views around a bit and hopefully you'll be able to get a good eye of what's going on. That's the reason why this isn't uh, live is so that we can really try and get as much on camera as possible. Anyway, guys, let's, uh, let's get on with it. I've got things nicely set up here. Um, what you can see is I've got my, my trusty mag light, which basically just makes things a little bit easier for my old eyes to see what's going on. Um, <clears throat> I've set up a, a camera right here by the workspace so that I can switch to, to that view um, in a moment so I can show you what I'm going to get done on this module. Uh, the first step is uh, what I'm going to do is just let me show you what I'm going to do. So we've got this memory module here. There is a damage component at that point there. So the first thing what we're going to do is we're just going to tape off the area with some heat resistant uh, tape uh, to protect the, the the solder points and everything else around where we're going to be working. We don't accidentally get uh, you know short out another solder point or something to that effect. So I'm going to mask that off. Once I mask it off, I'm going to clean up the solder the, the the solder pads. Then the step after that is I'm going to recover the same component off another stick of memory. Uh, um, I've decided that I'm butchering uh, stick number three for components and I'm taking off there and then placing on to four and then that should be a successful fix. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, and tape that up.
Right, so this is, it's not very delicate work, it's just you try and be as accurate as possible. The whole idea here is you, you're protecting the components around it from any solder splash or solder splatter. This, um, this job is very finicky. It's taken me a good couple of hours to get this far. I've lost one component uh, just by squeezing the tweezers too hard, it popped out. But uh, we're soon, pretty short, pretty soon we'll have two working dims from no working dims. And in my books, that's a win. Hopefully, it doesn't affect the performance at all. All right, so that's that taped up. Okay, and I'll go ahead and I'll show you what I've done there. All right, so basically, what I've used is this tape, and you should be able to see there, there's the mark where the faulty component is. You can see all the components around it have been protected, and just that, that uh, component is left exposed. So I'll now use the soldering iron to remove the damage, the, the, what's left of the old uh, component, and just clean up that solder point, and then uh, get ready to, to, to put the replacement part on. So you got to have patience with this job. It's not something you can rush. Uh, I spent hours on this today already. I fixed um, half of module two. I've got one more um, component to reinstall on that, that chip. Uh, I got a bit frustrated that I had removed the, the donor chip from dim number three, but as I was cleaning it up, um, it slipped out of the tweezers and I lost it. So I'm a bit frustrated with that, but I'll, I'll find another component. So I'm just busy cleaning up the solder pad. And it's a, it's a slow, delicate job. Really, you don't want to be rushing. You don't want to be rushing this part because you know the you don't want to damage the solder pad first of all, because once it's gone, it's gone. And you don't want to get solder onto any other component in the region, and that's the reason why we tape it off. So that's that basically done. Let's see if we can get it to focus on there. Right, can it focus? And focus, focus on my finger, come on, focus. Okay, it's not going to focus, is it? Okay, well, there we go. So that solder pad is now uh, cleaned up and it's ready for the, it's ready for its replacement. Just do a little bit more, just make sure. Yeah, now it's clean. You also want to make sure that there's not a, a huge amount of solder there. You want it to be as as flat and as uniform as possible. So that when you put the, the second and replacement part on there, and you just got I mean, your both ends will be tinned already. So you just got to you know, sort of give it a, a, a touch, and then hopefully that will be that. So let's just go ahead and I can see if we can get it to focus. And it's not focusing. So there, yeah, focus. No. Okay. Well, anyway, you get the idea. I've gone and cleaned up the solder pads. There we go. So you can see that it's nice and clean now, and it's ready for the replacement part. Let's just have a look at what I've got here. I've removed this component here off the donor memory card. That's the size of it right there, and uh, it's ready for placement on the on the memory module. So we're going to go ahead and bring our memory module back in and like I said it's a second hand part so it's already tinned I've made sure that it's it's clean and that it's not shorting uh, underneath and uh, what we do now is we put it in place and we 
get a little bit of solder on there and test with a multimeter and hopefully we're good to go. Okay, so we've got we've got the replacement part in place and just uh, getting it in place and then we're going to touch the solder on the one side then swing it around and we'll touch the solder on the other side just really go and make sure that we got it sitting nicely and of course the components are so small you've got to use tweezers not always the easiest thing to do with your left hand Okay, so that looks good. Let's go ahead and just try and get a little solder to take there. And that's that. We do the other side. basically done and um, we'll test it with a multimeter and see how it looks all right so this is basically done I'm just making sure that the uh, the contact the solder is good and uh, then we're going to test with the multimeter just to make sure that the readings are within range of what we're expecting and then we're good to go this is one stick that's fully repaired Let's just transition across and have a look, see if we can show you the work. So it's not pretty, um, but it should hopefully be functional. You can see down the bottom here that the replacement component is now in place and ready to rock and roll. So we'll just let that cool for a little while. Uh, what I'm going to do now is and remove the tape. I'll put the multimeter on. I compare it against another dim, and uh, hopefully we get similar readings. And we don't have any shorts anywhere. The tape should have prevented us from having shorts, but I think this one dim is ready to to be tested. Uh, I've just spent another another basically another hour um, busy with these repairs, and unfortunately, without having the knowledge of exactly what component I need to replace it with, I've run out of spare parts uh, from the Frankenstein modules, and you know, I'm at a loss now because I really need to try and figure out the, the value of the components that I need to replace. And unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to come right with that um, without the assistance of the manufacturer. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this outing as a 50-50 win-loss scenario. I did manage to get one dim out of the four working so uh, I suppose it's a one and a quarter success rate. Um, all in all, you know, a very, very frustrating job. Um, you know, the components are small. Working with secondhand service mount components is never easy at the best of times. And, you know, having so many of the components damaged in such a small area, it really made life uh, difficult. So what I ended up having to do was take uh, DIMS three and uh, DIMS three and one, and I used those as spare parts uh, to try and get the other the other DIMS working. So I got DIM four to work. Um, whether it's working 100% or not, uh, neither here or there. I guess it's uh, eight gigs of RAM that wasn't working before. So yeah, look, it's a uh, been an interesting day. I don't know if I would uh, do this type of repair in a hurry again, but you know, it's always a bit of a learning curve. It's always fun to try new things. Uh, uh, but what else can I say? I'm a bit disappointed. But uh, yeah, so I guess we'll just wrap this series up. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching um, watching this uh, little bit of a, a different uh, 
experiment of mine. And uh, guys, I guess what? Until next time, happy benching. 